His Excellency the President, Comrade Araji Mugabe, has exercised his powers to relieve Honorable Vice President Edim Nangagwa of his position as Vice President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. He was long seen as Robert Mugabe's heir apparent, but in a stunning turn of events this week, the President of Zimbabwe sacked his second in command. Emerson Nangagwa had been Vice President since 2014. He was exiled with the country's leader during the war against white minority rule, and many had expected him to take over, but it wasn't to be. Mugabe has accused him of disloyalty and deceit. His former deputy has now reportedly left the country because of death threats. Mugabe accuses him of consulting church prophets to find out when the 93-year-old president will die. And after expelling him from the party, Mugabe warned others could be next. Now, Grace Mugabe is set to be appointed vice president next month. So is she guaranteed to take over? Or could we see another plot twist? Well, joining me now from Namibia's capital, Windhoek, is Charlton Huende. He's the Deputy Tre Treasurer General of Zimbabwe's main opposition party, the Movement for Democratic Change, or MDC. Uh, good to have you on the program, Charlton. Let's maybe try to look at it from Mugabe's perspective for a second. Maybe this has nothing to do with Grace Mugabe. Maybe he just felt that Nangagwa was plotting against him and he felt he needed to make a move. Might there be a good reason to sack his vice president? From Mugabe's perspective, I think you must understand that Mugabe is an old African man. He's 92 years old. And uh, I, I suspect that the events that occurred in Bulawayo at the stadium where Grace Mugabe was booed by youths that were alleged to have been sent by Munangagwa might have actually prompted him to act. Because, look, he is a man, he's trying to be a, a man, he's 92 years old, he, he needs to protect his wife and family. If you are attack an old man like that, you attack his wife publicly like that, suddenly you are bound to get a reaction. And uh, uh, from Mugabe's perspective, might actually, that incident might actually have triggered his action. So is this the, the first or maybe one of the initial stages of paving the way for Grace Mugabe to eventually succeed him as president? There are two things here to note. Mugabe, since 1980, has always admired a, a one-party state and the life presidents. Whilst other people are saying that he is in the process of paving way for his own wife, Grace Mugabe, I see it differently. I see this as a consolidation by Mugabe himself to ensure that he dies in office. Mugabe is 92, but you must also understand that Mugabe's mother died well past the hundreds. So Mugabe, if, if, he, if we were to follow that lineage, Mugabe might actually be with us for a long time to come. And this, since he's already been proclaimed as the candidate in 2018, he is now removing all possible contenders to his continued stay in office and uh, later on uh, any possible challenger maybe should God call him uh, 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 if his wife uh, uh, takes over. But I think that this is part of a process for Mugabe to consolidate his hold on power and his continued stay in office. He doesn't seem like somebody who is ready to, to hand over power. He still wants to continue ruling the country. If he's purging within ZANU-PF, especially purging people with such immaculate, impeccable credentials from ZANU's perspective, isn't that good news for you guys in the MDC because you're seeing splits in the ruling party? Yes, definitely. You know, ZANU-PF has been on the decline. This is not the, the first split for, from ZANU-PF. We view it as a split because obviously Munangagwa is, uh, has been in ZANU-PF for a long time, he's part of the founding members of the ZANU PF. He has done most of the dirty work for, for, for ZANU PF. He represented the repressive side of ZANU PF. He, uh, uh, his role in uh, 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 <clears throat> squashing the opposition and anybody that has opposed ZANU PF 
from the time of, Jonah, of Joshua Ngomo up to present is well documented. Charlton Huende, thank you very much for joining us from Vintook. And that's all for this edition of the Newsmakers with me, Imran Garda. You can check out more of our stories on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.